right. Hey, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us for another week of market review here at Maxi. I'm Max. I'm joined with Sid, as always, and we're going to dive straight in this week. Uh, it is Bitcoin halving week. So this, on the 20th this week, uh, uh, April 20th, the Bitcoin block reward was cut in half. This is an event that happens once every four years. And uh, I mean, I've been around for this is like my fourth, third halving now. Uh, but it still raises a lot of uh, questions and a lot of confusion in the community. So we thought we'd start by uh, clarifying a little bit what happened, what does it mean, and, and what uh, is the implication moving forward from this. So uh, to, to dive straight into that, well, to understand what the Bitcoin halving is, we kind of have to understand how Bitcoins come into circulation. And so Bitcoin uh, is, is a network and the network is maintained by, you know, people running their computers and contributing this computing power to, you know, safeguard this network on a global scale. And in exchange for that computing power, every time a block is added to the blockchain, uh, there is a minting event triggered where new Bitcoins are created out of out of the network, out of nothing, effectively, and given to the the miners or the computing power that generated that block. From the very start of Bitcoin, this has been a fixed rate. So when Bitcoin first started back in 2008, I believe, is when the Bitcoin network first spun up and started running, every 10 minutes when the new block was found, mathematically on average, so obviously, you know, a little give or take there, but every block, every every mathematically averaged 10 minutes, 50 new Bitcoins were created out of the protocol, out of thin air, and distributed to the people supply, uh, supplying the computing power to the network. In that way, 10 minutes at a time, one block at a time, every single Bitcoin was created and distributed to the participants of this network. So it's a very much planned and a very fair and participatable and expected distribution model for how these coins are created and then distributed. Anybody can participate by simply adding their computer to the network and adding processing power to this uh, mining activity. And anybody can, you know, get lucky and find a block if they, if they uh, you know, beat the mathematical average. So every, from the start, every 10 minutes, new Bitcoins come into existence, 50 at a time. Every four years, that 50 got cut in half. So, you know, after, after that first four years in 2011, I believe, we had, um, yeah, we had the uh, block reward cut down to 25. And then, you know, again and again. And now with this most recent block reward halving, we are now down to just, just north 3. of 3.125. Three. Yeah, 3.125. So that's 3.125 new Bitcoins are created out of this mining pro uh, process every 10 minutes. Uh, if we now look at the total amount of Bitcoins in circulation, 2.125 Bitcoins per 10 minutes now shows us that the Bitcoin inflation rate, so the rate of new Bitcoins being created and entering the circulating supply of existing Bitcoins is now below 2%. Uh, APY. So two, less than 2% of existing circulating Bitcoin are being generated each year now. Uh, four years from now, it's going to get cut again down to like one point, you know, you know less and less. But basically, um, t this week on the 20th, we had the block halving event. Uh, since the 20th of April, the amount of new Bitcoins being generated by the network that might, you know, the mining of Bitcoins by the network of participants is now reduced by 50% and will never be higher than it currently is, never be more than 3.125 every 10 minutes. And because of that, Bitcoin has kind of crossed a threshold here where its effective inflation rate is now lower than basically every other asset, out there, every other cash asset out there. So, you know, yeah, under 2%, that's, that's cheaper than, you know, fiat currencies, government dollars, that's cheaper than basically anything. So yeah. this was a big time planned event. Everyone knew it was coming since the very beginning of Bitcoin. So everyone has been kind of excited about it. I've definitely seen some confusion. People thinking that you know, uh, it it you know means the you know the supply gets cut in half or something happens to like coins that you currently hold. None of that uh, will affect you if you're not participating in actively mining Bitcoins. You won't really notice a difference. The only right. difference is that the miners are now getting less. 
and what that means is they have less ability to sell new bitcoins and so the the idea here is that you know the reduced supply with a consistent demand so as long as the demand for bitcoin doesn't drop more than the you know supply then the price should increase and that's where a lot of models out there from like these big analyst firms are anticipating a a, a run up in bitcoin price in the coming years uh, and that run is basically uh, a product of this supply demand model where now the supply is being reduced while the demand is potentially actually increasing as institutional players are trying to you know take market share of the etf space really exciting yeah so so i guess we look at it from a from, so from a mar market perspective then i mean in the past too like after the halving yeah uh is when you see sort of like the the height of the bull market yeah after the halving historically so, has been like the millionaire maker bull runs uh, that we see yeah, so we have so. had a pretty aggressive bull run already it looks fantastic and if you've been trading with our uh, maxi trading buddy indicator like what you have uh, on on your chart there you've probably so, done extremely well since we uh, had our bull signal there we flipped to green and we bought pretty close to the bottom of this bear market just south of yeah. 25 uh, 25 hundred dollars yeah per Bitcoin. like so yeah this is like uh pretty yeah, good <laughs> around like twenty thousand so like <laughs> yeah, 25, yeah. 20, and, 20 and, to 24 or something you know it seems like a decent sized range it's like a 20 percent range but man it look, makes you look like a genius today so yeah <laughs> like 20 so, yeah, even 24 so we, whatever yeah so we bought spot like our indicator print signal bull and then it's just been on a tear like the whole market has been yeah. on an uptrend this we got bitcoin on the left side ethereum on the right side of the chart and what's interesting is that the last few weeks uh the stock rsi which is another indicator i'd like to use it looked kind of top so it had to it looked like it was going to cool down which it did and we saw this drop and then last week uh it kind of uh so so what's also interesting is that i noticed that uh, it's in a potential parabola and if you see the price wicked right right, at, right you know, to the target like right to the target and like it's it's held there so my guess is that and ethereum has done something similar too and ethereum has this Ooh, this like these two candles bottom. Yeah, tweezer bottom where like basically both the wicks are close to equal. So that's and this is kind of like a falling wedge with the tweezer bottom. So yeah, and that like long, long is, doji is also kind of indicates the change of a direction. So this is exactly. looking bullish. So <laughs> it's looking bullish. So or at least like a potential bottom. So yeah. like if this this might have been a good time to to add to our bags which i mean we did yeah I, we, did. we did we did so uh, we'll see out. got a little bit yeah of a nice so buy like there. if yeah this i mean it worked out great so far because we're already up and but but the interesting thing is that the parabola like you have these different bases so this seems to be all the pullback was doing was creating a an additional base before the next leg up so for it, for us to confirm bottom and reversal, we need to see a higher weekly candle. So that will confirm that we're breaking out of this like downward trend. Yeah. So that's so if we if we start Bitcoin closing Ethereum, above seventy four, seventy five thousand for Bitcoin, then that would indicate not only like you know a reversal on the chop there that's the that basically indicates yeah. the, a successful so think, base for the collab parabola breakout which if we do exactly. get that like then we can run pretty good sem, yeah so i think like 71.5 k is for bitcoin and i think ethereum like would be like 3.8 k like you know once it basically makes a new higher weekly candle then that's when you get a confirmation that's but a, that's what it's already see. looking like if it were to stay on this parabola then like yeah i think we're, uh, this and, is all the above. and you're noticing too that the srsi there is is approaching mm -hmm. the oversold side of its uh of its exactly. range so we, we definitely want to see some more buy pressure coming back to cool off or 
heat up, I guess, again, the SRSI, get mm -hmm. that back off the floor, back into the, like, you know, nice blue range there. Hopefully push it all exactly. the way to the overbought and give us a big pump. But it does, exactly. it is looking very, very, like, bullish in the sense that, like, the recent chop here in the market does not seem to have broken the model of the parabola just yet. And it does give yep. us... Uh, it gives us the sense that we're, we're building a base for the next takeoff. And that next takeoff should be uh, like uh, either this, the blow off top for this parabola, which, you know, yep. uh, which takes us pretty high up. Can you zoom out on that chart? How, where do we, where do we land on this one? Yeah. So like, uh, I didn't want to, I, I was waiting for the, the, for us to leave the base to like then share the target because oh, like we call. need a confirmation but that's true because the wider the base goes here, the higher the target becomes too is what you can get from. exactly so so from where we are right now like uh i think like you know like btc i think like maybe that's a little extended but like you know yeah. at least for ethereum like around 10k i think here I think like, I think 10k would be more like, 10k is definitely possible for like, Ethereum and for Bitcoin. It's actually like, about a hundred and twelve thousand dollars. So that would be around 112, 113, like around there. So, so we're that gonna, would be the target. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye to see that this parabola stays intact. And then, like you said, what we really want to see is that weekly close higher, so that we get the confirmation of the breakout. Exactly. So, like, once once we have that, then the then the targets can be drawn more. Exactly. Precise. And then, uh, uh, so that's the crypto market. We had a big development. Talks. We had a nice, you know, we had our uh, we had our halving event mm -hmm. happen, and the sell the news kind of event is chilling out. And then here's the stock market. So last time we looked at it, we were looking at it being a bit on the over uh, bought side. It had it had been you know kind of flatlining. You can see on the SR side there. And in the past few weeks, yeah. we got that to cool off, which is exactly what we expected. So it, yeah, and it pulled back right like, to the target too. The that you had there for uh, four ninety five, like yeah, literally and, to uh, the T. Right to the T, and like. Of course, our indicator, like, it basically signaled a flip and trend right at the top. So, see, you can see it went bare with the red band, and then price just started yeah, dropping. Yeah, so that's and on the daily. And then the weekly, you can see we're actually staying above the band. So, the weekly, the longer-term trend, still not, like, flipping super bearish. Exactly. And, and actually, you know, we had cooling off and finding support kind of on our on our strength band, which is where the support should be in an uptrend. So, this is still looking Yeah, bullish. which is... Which we, uh, which we also shared, I think, like last a few weeks ago, last week, that mm -hmm. price is trying to SR flip the monthly, yeah, uh, basically. So kind of like the all-time like high price from the previous support. bull run is like the is the monthly t like support resistance okay. target now. So I, I guess exactly. it's the monthly resistance, and we've broken through it already. But now what we really need is for it to fall back to it and bounce to move up again. That way, confirming mm -hmm. that it's no longer resistance, but it has in fact become support, and that's exactly. that's what we want to see yes, here. Absolutely. And it does start to look like that, like especially looking at yeah. the the weekly chart. Uh, the SRSI is looking more over uh, oversold. The yeah. chart is still green, still north of the of the band, uh, and mm -hmm. staying above our our support lines. So um, yeah, so for it to continue. In a bullish trend, price has to try to stay above the our indicator strength band. Yeah, like it can briefly dip and then go back up. That's yeah, that's fine. But like it shouldn't, it shouldn't uh, start making lower highs and, and yeah. And lower, so a, a big lows a big way that we like to uh, track the indicator is you see how it prints bull and bear right on the chart, but it also has that uh, the band there that changes from red to green. So if we do get a bull print, we want to see the bull print alongside with a green band. So you can see, yeah. like for example, at the very bottom of this QQQ chart there, or, or the SPY, you can see uh, we had that bull print during a green band. So it was like, oh, this bull print is bullish. Whereas after that, you see we got that bear print that looked like it, it would have been a fake out. A we would have gotten, yeah. we would have gotten like our our it's milkshake drink. And what happened? <laughs> You know, what happened yeah. there is uh, we got the bear print, which, which is bearish, 
uh, but we didn't get the color flip on the band. And that color flip is what confirms our, our indicators signaling. So we were able to okay. ignore that bear flip entirely and not get, you know, uh, bear trapped because we want, you know, to see a bear flip with an indicator changing color uh, yep. dropping. And so you can see like the QQQ, even though we have uh, now in the last two weeks or so, a big like red candle, you can see we're still on the green side of that. And all of this price activity, yeah. although it was pretty dramatic, like that's a long candle, especially for the QQQ, you know, this is, mm. that's a volatile week. I think uh, Nvidia lost like two hundred billion dollars off its market cap or something. Yeah, they didn't do well with earnings and like yeah. tech earnings. AMD we have also. a bunch of tech earnings this week too. And, so that and could... yeah, but like it it already looked like it was in a downtrend. So despite yeah. of Nvidia or not, so like and of course it didn't help it like because yeah. Nvidia makes up the QQQ and, a lot. And even when we see such a big but, candle in one day like that, you know, it can shake us out and be like very scary. But so that's another thing that I really love about the indicator where it's like, okay, yeah, it's big, but this is still like very clearly part of a bullish trend. Like we exactly. have a flip, we're not below the band. Like this is, you know, while the world is on fire, this is fine. Like the little dog picture who's drinking his coffee. Oh yeah, the meme, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, the kitchen's on fire, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah so like so like if you look at the so we were expecting a retest yeah pump to happen and that's what's happening because the stock rsi seems over yeah very uh, oversold. oversold so you know that should like it should go back up so but what price is gonna try to do this is a daily chart is that it's gonna try to retest the strength band yeah and then you know which is where resistance is also yeah so like if and we since clear we're not, this yeah go on. yeah if we, if we clear this and then we can uh we can say that okay we're gonna start making new highs after that right if not we we, we tap might, this and then like we then we'll retest the bottom end again someone, exactly yeah. so yeah and, and then oh, like, like like you see where where sid has those um support resistance line drawn out uh, it's right now it's a bit below where the indicator is but obviously it's not going to jump up that straight to there in one day or very quickly so over the course yeah, of so like a few days or weeks the band is going to come down and, and down. it'll likely it's gonna line move, up <laughs> yeah it's gonna, say, it's gonna line up very close to that like 512 uh 513 kind of range on the uh, spy or the uh, 437 yeah. for the qqq there so yeah this, that's kind of what we're watching for here is uh you know it's yep. look it's looking a little bit more bullish now uh, which is a bit Might of a, be a departure. Green week this week for exactly a little bit of a green week. Stuff, yeah. It doesn't mean necessarily green week doesn't also mean that we're going to go into like a green month or something. So like like Sid was saying, we want to see us you know retest that uh, resistance and then break through it to flip it and then get our SR flip confirming the breakout. At which point, of course, new all time highs are back on uh, on the table for the stock market. And then of course in crypto, we did get to take a look uh, quickly at the chart turning more bullish again. The parabola that has been in play for a little while but that we just shared uh to kind of keep an eye on here and hopefully give us a breakout into those astronomical all-time highs uh you know six figures for bitcoin uh five figures uh for eth so we'll hopefully break mm -hmm. those thresholds yeah. uh fingers crossed on that big time and then we also yeah. had our halving event which is the block reward for bitcoin was reduced 50 percent moving forward and it's now below two percent in inflation uh for the bitcoin total supply out there uh that is something that everybody had been talking about the news was like reporting on but it is also something that isn't necessarily super intuitive and easy to understand so we wanted to cover maybe the implication of that which i think the most straightforward understandable way to uh digest that information is the supply of bitcoin is being reduced moving forward and the demand is not necessarily being reduced. So the idea on a general like 101 economics understanding it is lower supply, constant demand equals higher value. Right. Yeah. Um, but we'll obviously we'll have to see. It's clearly not a 101, you know, super simple uh, price dynamic yeah. kind of equation. There's a lot going on in these markets. But, but with, we, we'll trade the chart, and right now exactly. it looks like it it's might have bottomed, good. and we're starting the next It's looking up. good, and we were able to jump in on a nice little like entry target there when uh, when the market did sell off, but stayed within our uh, weekly kind of price trajectory. Of course, uh, volatility 
was obviously expected on the lead up to such a big uh, known event such as the halving. Uh, I would also throw in um, let's continue to expect volatility post halving, and also yeah. given the situation uh, you know in in the world right now, the uncertainty out there, and the um, the unrest in you know many parts of the world that obviously uh, we're not you know following the news directly. Uh, as far as our trading motivations go, but we're aware of the news and we're aware of, um, you know, as traders and as, as people participating in these markets, we're going to be aware that volatility can be more expected when mm -hmm. these when these uh, tumultuous events are unfolding. And uh, while that's happening, I hope everybody stays safe and uh, is, you know, is able to uh, participate in this stuff, uh, you know, safely and, and not kind of get shaken out by just some bad news or just some, you know, uh, crazy volatility because yeah. it is expected. Whoa.